Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and it's been a while since we last panthed. So today, I'm going to build this panther so that we can panth. That's what panthers do. This is a 15mm or 1 100th scale plastic wargaming kit from Zvezda. That means it's a snap kit, so you don't need any glue. But if you don't plan on disassembling it, you might as well use glue. It'll help keep any gaps minimised. The back of the box has some information, like the scale, length of the completed model, and the parts count. There's also a couple of images of the completed model, and I do like that they show it unpainted. It lets you know what you'll be getting. Some of you will notice that the model here is a bit different to the one depicted on the box. I'm sure someone is furiously clacking away at their keyboard to vent their rage about this. The main differences I can see are the hull machine gun housing, and the fact there's Zimmerit on the box art, but not on the model, which I'm not especially upset about, but you know. It's still a panther, so let's have a look at what's in the box. This kit is made up of two sprues moulded in a light grey plastic, and they're quite neat and tidy, about the level I would expect from one of these Zvezda kits, which is to say fairly good. The mould lines are quite minor, and it shouldn't take too much clean up to deal with them. As you can see, the track sets are single pieces, which obviously makes for some very simple assembly. The detail here is also what I would expect from one of these kits. It's not a super detailed display piece by any stretch of the imagination. It's a wargaming piece and a quite small one at that. And that's what it's intended to be. So while the detailing isn't bad, and it's definitely a lot better than some of the earlier Zvezda kits, it's not bad, but it is simplified. If you are looking for extreme detail, a wargaming kit that costs less than $10 is probably not the place to be looking. Anyway, the parts here do look pretty good. I couldn't find any defects or anything I could see causing an issue for future Herbert. Or you. On the instruction leaflet here you can see that it says Panzer V aus Frong A, so perhaps the G on the front of the box is just a typo. Or they just couldn't be bothered making an actual Panther G. Who knows? The instructions are on the other side. Unsurprisingly, there's not a huge amount of instructions for this kit. It all fits here, and it's easy enough to understand and follow. The instructions don't give you an exact order of operations or anything like that, but it's not hard to figure out the order in which things should go together. Very good, let's glue some bits of plastic together. I start with the main gun. Because this is a snap kit, this will easily snap into the mounting bit. I snapped it in place while test fitting and not filming, and rather than force it back out for the camera, I've just left it there. I then slide the gun in through the back of the mantlet part. You could allow this assembly to move around, but obviously I've chosen to side with the glue god and bonded it solidly in place. I did briefly consider drilling out the end of the gun barrel, but the sides of the muzzle break are also solid and it looks like that would be a lot more effort to open those up, so I've just left it all. Maybe I'll take care of it with some paint trickery. I then glue the turret bottom into the turret top. There's a nice big mounting pin for this, so it should be pretty hard to get this wrong. I mean, if you really want to, I believe in you, but I don't see why you would. Then, that gun assembly can be attached to the front of the turret, which is a pretty good place for this kind of thing. Smoke launchers go on either side, and they've got these big chunky guide tabs to guide them. There is a fair bit of friction here, so I had to apply a good bit of pressure, but now that those are on, our little panther can launch smoke and escape undetected. Next, I begin on the middle of the hull, I guess you might call it, starting with this plate part. Onto this I attach this part, which has mounts for the hull sides and rear plate. Obviously you want to get this around the right way, otherwise no rear plate for you. Then we have these two doodads, which will also hold the upper hull sides. Nothing too complicated here. Why not put those hull sides on next? This can clearly only go on after the three previous parts, because otherwise there would be no mounts for them. The two forward ones also have a D shape to them to stop you from putting things together upside down, somehow. And then, some side skirts. Again, the guide pins for these should have enough friction that they stay there, but I've glued them anyway just to be sure. The upper hull is a bit useless without the lower hull, so let's put that together. Onto the hull bottom part, I press this framey thing into place. There's quite a few mounting pins here, and while you can't put it on upside down, you could possibly place it backwards, but don't do that. The rear pins should be angled slightly downward. 
Then I attached the lower hull sides, and these needed a fair bit of pressure to be pressed all the way into place. Pressing down on the axially bits on the swing arms might hurt your whittle fingies, so be careful. The tracks go on next, which I think makes a lot of sense. These tracks go on just as easily as you might imagine, especially if you imagine it to be very easy. They look pretty good from the sides. The tread detail isn't so good, mostly because there isn't really any there, but if you've seen these kits before, you won't be surprised by this, and you're mostly going to be seeing them from the sides anyway. It seemed like a good idea to join the upper and lower halves of the hull, and it was. A fair bit of pressure was needed to get these parts all the way together, and you can see there are stress marks from this around the mounting holes. It seems to go together well enough though. The hull top comes next, and would you be surprised to learn that this needed quite a bit of pressure? No? Well, it did. I also had to do a bit of kajiggering around the front corners to eliminate some gaps, but it goes together fairly well. Not perfect, but it's decent enough. The butt plate comes next. Butt plate, Herbert? That is the technical term, and you know it. I got the part into place, and the glue will make sure that it stays there. Praise the glue god. Just a couple more details to add now. At the front of the hull, I put this travel lock for the main gun. And, well, before you can smash your keyboard typing angry comments, I know I've put this on backwards. When you build your own, maybe just turn it around and then put it on so that the opening is facing rearward. Simple enough. Then onto the left side of the hull, where there are two large holes, I attach this cylinder, which I understand to be the gun cleaning kit. I don't think I did this wrong. If I did, smash away at your keyboards. Unfortunately, there's no turret locking mechanism, sorry for those who are into that sort of thing, but there is a pin and corresponding hole, and the fit here is quite tight, so when I put the turret on, the friction should hold it in place quite well. And with that, we've got one small panther completed and ready to do some panthing, which as we've established, is what panthers do. So it's not the model of panther the box says it is, and I did put the travel lock on wrong, and I'm sure that really upsets some people. Anyway, now that we know this isn't a panther G, you can just avoid buying the kit if you really really need a panther G. If you're just looking for a generic panther for your 15mm scale games, I think this would do a fantastic job. It does look quite panther, and that's pretty much what you want for a gaming piece. Unless the gaming piece you want is a Panzer IV or an elephant or something. The kit is, unsurprisingly, nice and quick to put together. You could build yourself an army of these things in an afternoon, and the price is pretty good. I paid less than $10 Australian for this, so not very much at all. Not a bad deal if you ask me. As I mentioned earlier, the model isn't super detailed and it doesn't claim to be. Obviously the detail has been a bit simplified. That means you can handle it while playing games without worrying about breaking it, unless you're extremely rough or something, or you play your games by stomping on the models. I mean, if you play that way, you do you. I'm probably not going to play with you though. All of that said, the detailing is still pretty good. There are some nice vents and grills and stuff that give it plenty of depth, and I think you could make up for some of that simplified detail with some painting trickery. It'll probably look really good with paint, are you going to paint it, Herbert? Maybe one day. Not right now, though. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you want to watch me build kits like this one live on stream, head on over to my Twitch channel. The link is in the description. And if you've not done so already, why not follow or subscribe here on YouTube for free? Or if you've got the means and you want to help me do the things I do, and see my videos a bit early, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon and all my other things like social media in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have an amazing day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.